Coming up next on the Mental Health Matters with Marty show, I am so excited. In concluding Black History Month, we have three black female doctors who are here to share with us about heart disease. Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Hey, so glad that you're here tonight for this special edition of Mental Health Matters with Marty. I'm going to tell you right now, get on the phone, call everybody, type in those names, because we have a show here for you tonight. All throughout February, I have been highlighting black male mental health therapists that we did this series called Superheroes of the Pandemic. I am so excited tonight that we have three amazing amazing black female superhero doctors and they are on the field they are in this pandemic they are helping our community and tonight we are talking about what heart disease in the black and african american community especially as it affects our black queens and we need you in here listen get on there type in that section right now everyone you need to i'm gonna give you all about a few minutes while i do all of my disclaimers you need to be up in this house tonight we we need you in here. We need to stop not having invalid conversations within our community. We already know that COVID is affecting us three times likely as our white counterparts. And the new CDC finding has come out that it has taken one year off of the life expectancy of our Caucasian counterparts, two years off our Hispanic counterparts, but three, yes, one, two, three, uno, dos, tres, un, deux, trois, three years off of us in in our African American communities. Why? Because we are not having these effective conversations about how to protect ourselves. We can no longer be not trusting the system, but we have some amazing, amazing doctors here tonight, and I am so excited to have them. So get out there. Let it be known. Listen, this has been, uh, our tonight is strictly for educational purposes. These doctors, because you have not hit their cash app, they are giving you medical advice from a support supportive network and supportive stance. So if you are experiencing any type of physiological emergency, any type of psychological emergency, or any type of emergency whatsoever, we encourage you to dial 911 or go to your nearest hospital. With that being said, listen, come on in the room, y'all. Let us know you're listening. Who's out there and where are you listening from? I am so excited to have this panel with us tonight. Listen, this needs to be on CNN, Oprah, uh, Iyala, get Get your life back, fix my life, get it back, whatever you want to say. Call T.D. Jakes, call Bishop uh, Omar, call everybody because we have some important information out here that you need to hear. So without any further ado, I am so excited that tonight's show, Mental Health Matters with Marty, is being sponsored by Gardena Women's Center, none other than Dr. Gwen Allen, who is in collaboration with, I'm going to get this name right, with the Inglewood Pacific Chapter of the Link. And we are so excited that they are our sponsors for tonight's show. And if you need any type of medical advice, especially women's, because Dr. Uh, the Gardena Women's Center is specializing in black women's health care. So we need to be having these conversations. So without any further ado, I want to bring, not for the first time, back to the Mental Health Matters with Marty show. And she's definitely committed. We're going to be doing a series on physical and mental health in the black community community none other than uc berkeley grad my my known her since she was 18 none other than dr gwen allen hey, dr allen i am well how are you i'm okay it's, it's great to be back on your show again and it's great to come out to give you some good news i have yes excellent friends on board tonight yes women who are well educated and well diverse in the health field and we're yes. here this enlighten um, African-American females about what's going on in the community. Yes. I would like to bring about um, 
attention to the community that we're in partnerships with the Links Incorporated. And yes. I have one of the Links on board. Her name is Lula Morehouse, and she will be speaking to us about what the Links is all about. Why yes. they came to partnership with us on this particular event and why they feel that it's most important for us to do so. So, as everybody knows, I'm Dr. Gwen Allen. I'm the owner and the, um, I guess you could say, the CEO of Gardena. That's right. Here in Los Angeles, California. We've been um, taking part in women's care for over 20 years now. And That's so right. Have, um, we have expertise in the field of women's health, of women's health care. Yes. Um, hypertension, somewhat, pretty much so, because most of the time women who see us will only see the obstetrician at that particular time. So we right. are the frontline one runners. We are the primary care advisors to most women out there. Mm -hmm. But I won't take up most of the time. But what I would like to put, first of all, I would like to bring on is uh, Link Lula Morehouse because I'm a link myself. Um, I'm okay. The Inglewood Pacific chapter as well. And in collaboration with them, I want Lula to come on and tell people about what the links are, what we do, and why she feels this event is important. Lula, welcome to the Mental Health Matters with Marty show. We are so glad to have you tonight. How are you? Thank you, Marty. I'm fine, thank you. And thank you, Dr. Link Gwen Allen, for uh, inviting us to participate with you on this platform. You know, before uh, Gwen asked to tell a little about who the links are. The yes. The links is a national organization, national, international organization, the links incorporated. But here in Inglewood, California, we have a chapter that we started the vision started back in 1978. So just think about that. We've been around for a long time. Yes. We started with uh, Link Vera Rickett and Link Thelma Rice. And they came together to discuss how they could help the Inglewood community. And for mm -hmm. those that don't know, Inglewood in Los Angeles is where the airport is located. Right. Inglewood in Los Angeles is where also the new SoFi Stadium is located. Yes. So, you know, that's Inglewood. It's the city of champions. That's so they right. they came along and they thought about how they could do more for our community, for our people in our community. So Link Thelma Rice, Link Vera Rickett, and Link Irene Rush got together and they did some planning with 14, of, 14 people and they came together and they decided to come together to do this organization for a uh, civic, social, and cultural endeavors for the mm -hmm. city of Inglewood and our neighboring communities. So on May 6th in 1979, the chapter was chartered. We continue to do community service. We are a friendship organization, but we also are an organization that believes in leadership and, mm -hmm. and, and we believe in giving back to our community. We believe in doing for others that uh, uh, what they cannot possibly do for themselves. Right. We have a lot of community programs that we are very proud of. And as Link Gwen said, this is this platform we're doing today is part of the Health and Human Services Project. Yes. But we also have a project for the arts, a project for the children, which mm -hmm. we call it Services to Youth. We have an international awareness pro uh, pro pro uh, program, which mm -hmm. we do a lot for uh, the com uh, communities of Jamaica and Haiti. We also have, um, I'm trying to make sure I get them all. <laughs> well, you guys are busy. <laughs> well, we are very busy. Yes. You know, uh, uh, so we are very proud of the services that we're doing in Inglewood. And to partner with you, Marty, and your platform is giving us an opportunity for people to know who we are. That's so on right. On behalf of my chapter president, Link Marguerite Denise Dowdy, I bring greetings from our chapter. And again, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this platform and thank you for allowing the community to get to know who Inglewood Pacific chapter of the links who we are so thank well, th you thank you because you know during this time especially during this pandemic we if nothing else has taught us to go back to the basics go back to our communities for help and we've had to find restitute 
uh, uh, sanity, can I say that, uh, in our communities. And now that we know, for those who may not know about the links, thank you for sharing that about us, uh, about yourselves and how they, people can get involved. And I love this. Dr. Allen, why is it so important that we connect with our community partners, especially in our uh, black and brown communities? And why is that so important that we use them to get information such as health and wellness out? You know, there's power in numbers, Marty. And yes. That's the most important thing that people need to understand. If we work in our own little silos, we won't get mm -hmm. an opportunity to touch all the people that we need to touch. Right. Uh, the collaborations that we have with you, myself, the Links Incorporated, we're able to touch a vast majority of people, a larger audience, and also when people hear from people who look like them. Right. How can I say apt to take on that advice? Because yes. you can hear it out there. Like it doesn't affect me, it doesn't affect you. But when someone looks like you, talks like you, tells you something, you would sometimes more heat to do that. So our collaborations are most definitely important because people need to see that we do these things. Yes. They do happen in the community. Yes. That's good. That's good because you know, our community has always um struggled. In the medical field you know we, we still even though the last of the tuskegee experiments was in 74 the the lasting effect of it we still talk about it when we look at henrietta uh lax and and those type of things and how john hopkins used her sales and did not give her we've been been targets in our community so now to show that we can have trusted partners with people who look like us who feel like us and who care like us that is so important so thank you you, ladies for all that you do and the work is so great and we're just beginning especially as we're turning this corner on this pandemic uh with that so i'm excited i got my first shot i get my my second one coming up but i'm still alive nothing fell off and i'm good <laughs> well, well, I, look, I got my two and i got my mom who's actually 91 wow. years old both of yes up walking and talking and you know i think she had something in that shot because, you know, now she's like coming and you probably hear in the background talking about you're right watching me on the show right about now. Come and, on, uh, Mama Allen. <laughs> she can, look, if she can type, type, she'll probably be typing on the side there. That's but, right. Uh, I think it's good. So uh, what we can do now, I'm okay. excited to bring my girls on. Um, these young ladies, a group of young women who I've had, a, I, I won't say young women, I say mature ladies, who I've had the opportunity of knowing for at least 30 plus years. Right. Expertise in their field. And the first one I would like to bring on is, let's say Giselle McKinney Hawkins, Dr. Hawkins. Yes. Actually coming live to you from, where you come from? St. Um, Lake Charles. Lake Charles, Lake Charles, Lake Charles Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. You know, I'm All right. Sure of bringing her on. I know at her time period, it's like almost 10 o'clock at night. And yes. Giselle has an opportunity to tell us about us. She said, Giselle, why don't you tell us about yourself? Tell all the people, all the great work you're doing and who yes. you are for Lake Charles. So I'm a native from Chicago, Illinois. I trained at Cook County Hospital with a friend uh, that you'll see on this show, Dr. Jamie Horn. Um, I uh, have enjoyed living in Lake Charles, Louisiana, Louisiana for the past uh, 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great place to raise children. Um, currently, um, we have been uh, impacted by hurricanes, the pandemic. We yes. are the only city in uh, southwest Louisiana that has been um, hit by two hurricanes back to back. So we wow. are trying to recover from that on top of the pandemic. And then there was the issue of the freeze that affected um Houston and Texas in general, but it also affected Louisiana as well. Yes. So all of those things, as well as the socioeconomic uh, disparities mm -hmm. led to highlighting with the pandemic, the health disparities that uh, people of color um, yes. are faced with. So when you already have a socioeconomic disparity, you also, that leads to a health disparity mm -hmm. um, and it highlights the things that have already existed and then you end up with worsening outcomes, which is what we already knew. It just brings yes. it to the forefront. Yes, yes. Thank you for being on the show so tonight. So I practice in Lake Charles. Yes, excellent. Dr. You're Allen, welcome. who else are you bringing on? I'm bringing on a, another good friend of mine, Dr. Jamie. I think we kind of froze up a little. Can you hear me? Live. I yes. You, um, you look great, too, by the way, in Lake Charles. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring our other card of card on. She's actually... Uh, Black female doctor who's been practiced over 30 years, board certified, is Dr. Jamie Horn. Are you, 
here to see it. There you go. All right. Looking wonderful there. All right. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Horn. Okay. My name is Dr. Jamie Horn, born and raised in Cali. I graduated from USC uh, Keck School of Medicine. I've been here in Chicago for over 20 years now. I am the chairperson of our department, OBGYN, at the University of Chicago Medicine Ingalls campus. And I am also the lead OB at Family Christian Health Center, which is an FQHC in Harvey, Illinois. And we service um, patients with no insurance, uh, public assistance, uh, private insurance. If you come and we service you. That's kind of our motto. Um, I'm a wife, a mom of two young adults, and I am a fitness fanatic. And thank you for my uh, okay, Dr. Allen, you you brought some heavy hitters tonight. Heavy you know, hitters. I know you don't play. Listen, we got directors of departments and all over the state. And yeah, I run the state department of this, and I love it. Come on, don't play with our people. I brought these ladies on just to see that because, and also, we're on different coasts, but we still yes. have an opportunity to see the same type of people, African yes. females, and we're serving them all over. And I just wanted to say, I see my niece on the line. Hi, Jasmine. <laughs> 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 but I want to just jump right into it. We can actually, yes. you know, one of the things we want to come and talk about today is cardiovascular health in African-American females. Yes. When we see, I know COVID is out there and it's getting everybody bombarded and things of that nature, but we can't forget about the chronic illnesses that affect our community on the day. That's right. Basis. What's happening now, people are so focused on COVID and what is going on with COVID, but not really focusing on the fact that I have high blood pressure. I right. have diabetes. I have not been able to move in a year, and now I'm going to have the 10 pound COVID or the 20 pound. Right. Now, what does that do to our mental health? What does that do to our cardiovascular health? And yes. And that's on this panel here tonight to show you. And all that said, what we're saying today is that African-American women, the leading cause of death at this point is cardiovascular disease. It's a mm. silent killer. We don't mm. know about it. We think that we're okay. And next thing you know, we have a little bit of chest pain, have some sweatingness. And all of a sudden that we find out we have high blood pressures and subsequently kin kidney disease. And mm -hmm. then it becomes traumatic and change our whole lifestyle. Dr. McKee, Dr. Giselle Hawkins, who is my good friend, will start off in telling us about what are your thoughts on how cardiovascular disease have affected the African-American community and what we should do about it. That's good. Well, we started off talking about how the pandemic hit us, how um, it highlighted the economic, socioeconomic and health disparities in the United States, which most of us already knew existed. Well, it's compounded by the fact when you have redlining, you also have loss of revenue, loss of business, loss of food, food insecurity, and absolute poverty. You also have lack of access to care. So your outcomes are going to be significantly poor. Black women or African-American women are two times more likely to die of cardiovascular disease or have cardiovascular disease than their white counterparts. We actually do worse in just about all demographics not necessarily because we're less healthy, but because we have less access to health care and education. Um, one of the things that Dr. Allen mentioned earlier is about what you see. You covet what you see. If yes. you don't see somebody that looks like you, you already know from our history and you can't erase it that you have less trust. So now yes. if you see someone that looks like you, you're more likely to trust. Um, there is something to be said about your... Um, racial diversity because it helps us to be able to connect with the people we're talking to. Um, I find that, yes, um, uh, people of color tend to not want to take their medicines. Right. They don't understand that when you look up and see all these dialysis centers, they're right. people like us. Come um, on. You can live in a, in a rural area like it's a rural city where mm -hmm. there are cows literally outside my uh, office um, across the street and I don't have fresh fruits and vegetables. Even right. in the city, there's no farmer's market. And I can get that in Chicago. Um, right. But we don't have it here. 
when you look at how intentionally we remove grocery stores from the uh, Come areas on. predominantly by black people, you right. can't blame them for their hypertension, their diabetes, their other ailments because we set it up to do that. Um, yes. It's by design and it is lethal. But we have to be proactive. It doesn't cost much to make a garden in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't cost much to put a, a garden in your in your uh, patio or your porch. So we have to be more proactive on how we do things. There's also a problem when you have an increased action on areas of crime, you're less likely to be able to exercise. And now people during the pandemic can see you don't need to be at Planet Fitness, even if it's 10 Come to on. Fitness. You can exercise in your living room. You can exercise on your patio or your deck. It takes you the willingness to do so. So again, um, the... Problems that we see in the healthcare for Black or African American women um, can be changed, but we have to focus on what we want to do for our people. Um, so, just like Dr. Horn's practice and Dr. Allen's practice, our practice takes all comers. We take, except, except with Dr. Um, Horn, she works at a federally qualified health center, she can take the uninsured. We can take everything except the uninsured because we don't get that assistance from the federal government. But we all have committed to, from our residency to this day, 20 plus years later, to care for those that look like us and are less likely to get care. So we see um, a variety of diseases that most people don't see and right. we take them on head on and you know do what are best for them. Um, with women, they are less likely to seek care outside of their OBGYN. Mm. So that we have to be able to diagnose the um, hypertension, start them on care. I've even had patients that do not want to go to anyone, even though I'm telling them, I can take you so far, you need mm -hmm. to go to someone else. It's about trust and building up a relationship. And once you do that, I have to tell you, I trust Dr. Allen. I'm going to right. respect her. She's going to co-partner with me to get us to a better such where we can work cohesively together to get you to a better outcome. So that's what we do on a, uh, on a daily basis. I love that because you, you said a couple of key things. I, I don't want us to miss the fact that, Dr. Allen, you started off with saying that cardiovascular, that, 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 our cardiovascular and heart disease is the number one silent killer for black women. Mm -hmm. And that you said, we have to learn to eat better. Did I hear that right? We have to learn how to exercise and we have to make sure that we are vigilant about the, uh, our, our own health with it and not be so lackadaisical and relaxed about it. And Dr. McKinney, I love even what you said. Dr. Allen and I have definitely done some some referrals because she can do a warm handoff to right. to to in doing mental health and and I still have a lot of your patients uh, with that uh, you, you know which ones I'm talking about we still praying for them but uh, <laughs> but but you said something that was very key that 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 having you being able to make that referral because they trust you you've built the relationship with yes. them and when you say hey I'm referring you to Dr. Allen or I'm referring you to Dr. Horn they trust you because they have a relationship with you and that is so important in our yes. community with that go ahead Dr. Allen now you have some more questions for us the question one of the things I want people to understand too you have to know your risk factors come on some people don't understand if you have a family disease, a family history of diabetes, hypertension, you're more likely at risk of getting hypertension. So therefore, you need to do the preventive things such as exercising, such mm -hmm. as smoking, stop smoking, stress, get rid of your stress, to have something in an outlet of things of that nature. If you're an alcohol drinker, you know, minimize what you drink, but you have to eliminate your risk factors because those are the things that cause you to have yes. the disease. But you also have to understand there are certain things that you cannot prevent. Increasing age causes you to have sometimes elevated blood pressure, yes. vascular disease, and also the family history. But we should talk about the things that you can prevent, such as obesity, physical inactivity, high cholesterol. And that's why we mm -hmm. brought Dr. Horn on to mm -hmm. talk about what exercise and what can that do for the individual. Dr. Horn, tell us about how can... Um, exercising and cardiovascular disease changes. Nice. What does that do to your mental health? What does that do to your hypertension? So exercise works wonders. And when I mm -hmm. tell patients to exercise, 
They think I'm saying go run a marathon. That's not what I'm saying. You right. As little as 30 minutes, three to four times a week. And that will help. You will gain the benefits of the exercise, meaning it'll help lower your blood pressure. It'll help increase your HDLs, which is your good cholesterol. It'll help with your mental health. It'll help prevent or stay slave off um, diet, type 2 diet. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying, exercise. Yes, going to the gym is nice, but everyone's not a gym rat. So that means right. that's lace up some tennis shoes and walk. There are tons of free apps on people's phones now, My Fitness Pile, things that will help you track your runs. Other things you can do that I like to do, YouTube. YouTube mm. has free videos about everything. Right. If you, if you like to dance. You yes. A name of a song and you can get the choreographed moves from a dance song. If you like to do step aerobics, they have free step classes. If you like to do hit class, which is high intensity interval training, they have right. classes online. There is something out there for everyone. And even if you didn't work out when you were younger, like I never really was an active person. I didn't become physically active until I hit about 42, 43. A friend of mine asked me to run a marathon and train with her and mm -hmm. after I did that I got hooked and so mm. the other thing I told people do it with friends I only did it because yes mine asked me and it was fun and it wasn't like we started out running we'd walk a block run a block walk a block run a block and we were finally able to build up to run marathons girl I'm still on that block no. <laughs> <laughs> yes but she's she's really talking really <laughs> true to do a half marathon and you and she's oh that's good you can't, back, you can't back out when you put you give her she will no ma'am you cannot you cannot and back out don't let but, what giselle knows i've showed up at her house in a snowstorm we are uh -oh. going to run <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, yes. Bless, bless you. Bless you. But, but Dr. Art, you said something that was very key because too often we think that, well, I'm not running a marathon. Just walk around the block. Yes. Walk up and down your steps. If, if I heard you, Dr. Horn, correctly, you said, let's just get the heart flowing. Correct. Get get the heart moving. Do, don't just sit there and become a couch potato because, you know, I, I got to get my summer body back because I'm tired of wearing this myrtle. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's not but here's the thing, Marty. Sweaty. It's about what I tell patients, get a little, you know, miffed. Get a little right. hot under the collar. But you don't have to be dripping in sweat to say you yes. have to work out. Getting your heart rate up for 30 minutes is all you need to do. Yes. But you you also what, what, think about this, too. As we get older, if you don't use it, you lose it. You know, yes. how many people can't touch their toes? How many right. people can't sit and cross their legs? That's right. also playing in the circulation too. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Yeah, that's so good. That is so good because you know, at, at fifty, uh, uh, a little and a little change, uh, my my mind gets up some days, but the body doesn't. Uh, <laughs> so we got to keep it lubricated and everything else. That's good. Thank you for sharing that because that's so important. Because we can no longer just sit and do nothing. Today, I choose to show up. And what does that mean? I choose to be active. I choose to eat better. I choose to take my blood pressure medicine. Hello uh, with that. Go ahead, Dr. Allen. I know you got some more questions. Yeah, Talk to us. Saying, I would say most of the time, people don't want to take their high blood pressure medicine. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing that we need to do. Like we talked about earlier in one show, why men don't like doing that, because what happens with, and Giselle will touch upon that, most men don't like taking their high blood pressure medicine because it affects their libido. Women yes. don't like to do it also because what happens is they start talking about they have to go to the bathroom a lot. We pee a lot. Things that right. Nature. So we have to make sure that we understand that cardiovascular disease and hypertension affect 47 percent of African American women. And if we don't do something about it, you think COVID is going to take us out? Hypertension yes. is going to continue to take us out without us even knowing about it. And Giselle and I talked about earlier, and Giselle, you can talk on that. Talk to the people about when the doctor comes to them and say, what's your good cholesterol? What's your bad cholesterol? That's good. What we can do about it. Giselle, what do you think about it? Talk to us. So when you're looking at your cholesterol level, you're looking mm -hmm. for your HDL, which is your high-density lipoprotein. You need mm -hmm. that to be higher. 
Um, if you're lower, if your HDL is lower, it tells me that you're at increased risk for a heart attack or stroke. That tells mm. me that the good cholesterol is not in a higher demand so that you're lo more likely to have plaque along your cardiovascular system leading to a heart attack or a stroke. Your mm -hmm. LDL or your um, uh, should be lower. So if you exercise, even if it's the 30 minutes that uh, Dr. Horn was talking about, you will see that your HDL will go up. You're mm -hmm. exercising your heart and you're pumping blood through your system. So that muscle, because your heart is a muscle, is strengthened. Mm -hmm. And the blood flow that gets your healthy cholesterol going through your system helps protect and coat your vessels so that you don't end up with a stroke. Um, yeah. Then we talked about how men don't want to take medicines because it's not necessarily it affects their libido. It causes impotence. So yes. if you're on a blood pressure medicine, you're more likely to have um, non-functioning of your, uh, uh, of your um, I guess, how graphic do you want me to say, of your penis. It's not going right. to correct when you're um, in, engaged in intercourse Right. some of the blood pressure medicine. So it's a struggle because um, ACE inhibitors work better in African-American population. Mm -hmm. uh, things like amlodipine and hydrochlorothiazide work better in African-American population, but it also may lead to some impotence in men. However, the ultimate impotence is a stroke. So you right. got to figure out which one you want more than the other. And we just had a patient who um, at 80 decided that her hydrochlorothiazide was too much for her. And she stopped taking it without telling anyone. And she just had a stroke and it's got hemiparesis. She's paralyzed on the left side. So we have to take it seriously because it will take you out of here. And forget COVID. Those right. other things are still a factor. Now, Doc, speaking for the men, since I'm the only man on here that we that take high blood pressure medicine, don't tell. I take the lowest one though. Now, now okay. what? <laughs> I'm speaking for the men, folk. Now, I take the lowest one for the high blood. <laughs> Right now, I try to exercise a little bit more. You know, I try to eat more salad and green vegetables. Now, for the men that just want to know, I'm speaking for the other men. Isn't there something they could do to help their libido out? Because uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of men. Let's be honest. A lot of men they they value who they are based upon their sex life and and what they what they think might be left over you know uh but how do what what do men do to combat that since we're talking about that so we i don't want to have a stroke but they still want to have an active sex life but you can also have your doctor to balance those medicines out so you have to have nice. that conversation with your doctor right you have to say that i'm having some issues in the bedroom but however, I still want to live. So therefore, I need to come to an actual balance to see That's what's good. happening. So therefore, Marty, that little blood pressure medicine that you take, <laughs> you can change the, the class of drugs where you can still, you know, have elevated, I mean, decreasing your blood pressure and make right. a healthy life, but also have a healthy life in the, the bedroom as well. Just right. like the women... I'm not going to put you on blast, Dr. Horn. I love her to death. She's actually very tiny. But unfortunately... <laughs> with hereditary component that she runs every day. So do you take your blood pressure medicine, Dr. Horn? Tell me about that. You know what? It, it's a mindset. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It I is. Mean, I wasn't taking it every day. I was like, oh, I feel good. You right. Know? I feel fine. Because I was diagnosed in my 20s while I was in, in med school. And until I start seeing patients who did not take that medicine. Right. That's kind of what woke me up and tried to get me to eat healthier. I'm now um, vegan. Not that I'm saying everybody needs to be vegan. Not saying right, that, right. But I'm just saying I'm trying to do things to help me live longer, to help keep my blood pressure under control. Wait, but my auntie put in here the blue pill. She's trying to kill me with the, taking that blue pill and taking my blood pressure. <laughs> you got to take care with that. You yeah, I can't take that, that blue pill with my blood pressure medicine. I'll be in a, a hospital for real. <laughs> All right. Somebody named Virginia said they need to have a conversation with their partner. And yes. Really and the kissing goes a long way. You <laughs> don't want your partner to stay alive till your partner takes the uh, blood pressure medicine and hold hands. And speaking of that, let's talk about stress, right? Yes, yes. We all know that stress play, play a major role in cardiovascular disease. We mm -hmm. all know that once you get all stressed out, your blood pressure shoots way up, your heart starts pumping really fast. And those are the things that can actually cause you to have a heart attack. Oh, and wow. If you don't learn how to control those stressors, 
how, you know, we can actually end up, you know, six feet under or things of that nature. Yes. Now, how would you suggest that people learn to deal with their stress when they're taking blood pressure meds or they're stressed out in their environment? How do we have, as African Americans, the top reason why we stress out is over money, yep. over work over yep. the company, over the relationship, and now over COVID. Now, if we already have risk factors of having a stroke or cardiovascular disease, what do you recommend that we do to kind of put this all together where we can have a healthy life? Yeah, I'm going to say the bad word of the black community, self-care. We have we have thought of self-care as being selfish. And I say, listen, if you don't do self-care, you're going to be self-dead uh, here in a minute. And we have to learn to do those things. I love what you all say. I'm just reiterating everything that everyone's saying. Know your body. Know your limitations. Know when's the right time to take your medication. I take my blood pressure pill first thing in the morning. As I brush my teeth, my pill bottle is right there so I don't forget. Now, I'll go to the bathroom all day, but I'd much rather do that so I can get sleep at night and it works better. But but also, if you need to see a therapist, it's okay. Let me say that again. If you need to see a therapist, it's okay. I see my therapist so I don't go uh, uh, loco on y'all. Uh, if I don't see my therapist, I'm going to lose it. Know what, what your triggers are and work through and get a treatment plan. And I'm going to say an integrative treatment plan that you're doing with your doctors and your psychologist and your cardiovascular doctor and whatever. Because now if you give everyone permission to have this discussion, like Dr. Allen and I do with some a lot of her patients, we now can help bring a cohesive treatment plan that speaks to the whole being and not just one segment of what uh, who you are as well. So I, I definitely stress definitely getting yourself um, knowing what your triggers are, definitely seeing your therapist or, or seeking therapy, but also knowing your own body. Know when you get stressed. Know when you need to take a break. All of that is part of a self-care regimen that is so imperative to our living. I, I totally agree with that. And I saw a comment. Hi, Cabrini. How are you? Um, so I'm uh, coming from Cabrini. Mm -hmm. that, you know, meditation is key. I'm one yes. so um, high powered. I won't say high powered. My brain doesn't stop. And I'm going to learn how to meditate. Because <laughs> I also learned that, that meditation is key. Because if I try yes. to turn off, you got to turn off sometimes. You yes. Know, you got to make sure that everything is also off around you. You mm -hmm. gotta understand that stress plays a major portion of disease, not only it the does. Heart, but of the total body. We have to make sure our mind and our body are working together as one and not a dichotomy. So yes. our goal is to make sure that we bring those two together and that that mind and that body work together as one. Because if you start flipping out and even though you're taking your medication and you still stressed out and you don't have that outlet, you can have a heart attack. And yes. Also, if you don't incorporate your diet, if you're still saying, I'm going to work out, Dr. Horn, I'm going to work out, and I'm not going to sweat, but I'm going to eat some McDonald's french fries that stayed under my thing that, you know, forever, you're eating wrong, you're still stressed out, and you're yes. still putting everything together, at some point, something has to give. And most of the time, it airs on the side of the body and not necessarily the mind. Yeah. So when you're exercising, Dr. Horn, and when you're doing those type of things, what are you, is your mind clear? Are you telling the patients and things like that? What what do you tell me? If I come to you and say, Doc, I work out every day. I'm not losing weight. My blood pressure is not going down. What is your advice to people? Mm, that's good. First, my advice is, are you doing what you love and what you enjoy doing? Don't mm -hmm. run because I run. Like right. doesn't love running. But if you like right. to spin, if you like to walk, and there's no pressure. You know, when I run, I'm not trying to run a race. I know I'm not getting a medal. I am just out there trying to enjoy myself and relax. And yes. patients do things that they enjoy. You get caught up in it. Turn on some music and just dance in your living room. That's it. Mm -hmm. Dance with your kids. And and it can it takes a lot of stress off of off of your mind and your body. I know for myself during COVID. When it really first started, me coming home and getting on my bike to just kind of let all that go was really the thing that saved me during that time. It really mm -hmm. brought me some peace. That's yeah. good. 
Now, yeah, my is. other question is is to Giselle. Marty, I know this your show, but you know. No, I'm you like you're all right. You're my co-host tonight. Like, you're all right. I like that. <laughs> co-host. co-host. Did I get some of your sponsorship? No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, you're the you're sponsor the tonight. Oh, my God, I'm the sponsor tonight. You're the sponsor uh, tonight. But, Giselle, my, my question to you is if someone comes to you with a laundry bag of this mm-hmm. paper bag full of medicine, most of the times you do, you have a paper bag, and all they do is have medicine. And, Doc, I don't want to take this medicine because I'm taking too much. What is your advice? That's good. These patients that come in with cardiovascular disease, what, what is your advice when you have a thing full of medicine? What do you tell them? So I tell them, I, I look at the total patient. Um, a lot of times people on a lot of medicines um, are morbidly obese. Um, they mm-hmm. are usually going to have hypertension, diabetes. Um, they may have even had multiple other um, uh, health issues. So in doubt, undoubtedly, a lot of health issues are centered around obesity. And I'm not saying everyone has to be skinny or size four, they don't. What they all should be doing is working to decrease the central obesity. So the abdominal fat is also linked to disease. Um, The morbidly obese are increased risk for for colon cancer, for Mm -hmm. diabetes, hypertension, stroke. So when you look at, and actually all cancers for that matter, and then if you think into breast cancer, that's also has a higher mortality rate in, in women of color, specifically black women. Um, so when you take in all of that and you can see the link between obesity, I have to try to tell them, taking yourself off these medicines can take you out of here. And I'm not meaning in a good way. So right. if you want to keep living and you want to come off the medicines, what are you prepared to do to do so? Are you going to get more active? Are you going to drop the weight? And I'm not saying it's easy, but if you takes 21 days to break a bad habit, what, what are you going to do for the next 21 days? Are you going to get mm-hmm. up every morning? Maybe not every morning, every other morning. So three to four days a week, are you going to get up and do something so that you can live the best life possible for the rest of your life? Or are you going to complain and be sicker for the rest of your life? And uh, from personal experience, Jamie will tell you and Gwen, that I am sometimes stop and start my exercise. I let life and stressors get in my way. And mm-hmm. when I get back to exercise, and I find that I feel so much better. Even still knowing that I'm telling this to other patients, you fall into life experiences and you go on to what you what you saw. Because you know, we all grew up in homes with mothers that sacrificed everything for their kids. Right. I'm tr- it's a struggle to break that habit. Um, when you do that, you leave nothing for yourself. You leave no energy, so no space for you to be the best you can be for your kids. And I have three children. Well, they're not little anymore, but um, I have three kids. I have a husband who's very um, attentive. So I have to make sure I'm going to be here for the long run. Mm-hmm. And I can't be here and be worth anything if I'm sick all the time. And that pays into mental health, too. The sicker you are, your mind and your soul feel horrible. Yes. What are we going to do to change it? We have to make choices. Can I speak to that 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 twenty one day to habit thing too? I, I kind of I, I do definitely believe that, but I, I want to take it a step farther. Dr. Caroline Leaf, a, a clinical psychologist, says it this way. She says it takes three cycles of twenty one days to really get it in us. The first twenty one days is just really saying it and starting to get it into our system. If you if I can say it that way, I'm going to get up. I'm going to exercise, and even if you just go from from here to the front door or something, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get exercise. So we're saying it to get it in our system. Then the second 20 set of 21 days is starting to believe it. We say, hey, you know what? I really am. Now I'm going to walk around the block because now it's starting to, you're starting to get in the groove, if I can say it that way, Dr. Horn. And then finally, that third set of 21 days is about now living it and it's becoming a part of you, a part of your daily routine in that. Dr. Allen was a basketball player. Y'all didn't know she was, she could hoop on you, huh? And, 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 and during those times, you know, going to practice, I'm sure you didn't want to go out to practice, but you had to, right, right. But but it took you about 15, 20 minutes to get in the right frame of mind. And then you find yourself in the groove. I'm sure there's times you didn't feel like delivering babies. You're like, oh, it's six in the morning. I really got to be here. And you're like, okay, OK, 
okay, you start scrubbing like, okay. And it took that month to start ch transforming your mind. You know, put on those sh those sneakers. Like, okay, I'm transforming. Put on the jacket. I'm starting to transform. So now that your mind is catching up with your body and then getting it out there. So now it becomes not just saying it, but you're doing it. And then that moving from doing it to actually living it and it being a part of you. And that, that is key, Marty. And I think that's what we don't do. I mm -hmm. think, again, like you said before, we try, we tend to try to isolate both events. Yes. Our mind is over here and our body is over here, but we yes. got to put them together to make to, it a whole and all to to gel in order for us to live healthy. Yes. Is, we need to back up. Let me just back up real quickly. Um, thank you, Jazz. A comment that just came out to me was saying that what's a normal blood pressure? What is our aim? What is our goal? That's you know, good. What you see, it's like 120 over 80. You know, people come to your office sometimes and say, my blood pressure is good. And you're looking at 160, diastolic. Oh, that's good for me today, doctor. Mm -mm. And you have to realize that is not good. Most of the time, if we have high blood pressure, starting from 120 over 80, that's normal. Anytime you start hitting that 130 over 40, that is type what we call stage one. And we should start looking at those things, how you're going to have lifestyle style changes. When you start getting to the 140s and 50, that's stage two. When we get to the 150s above, that's stage three. That's that's where mm. we don't want to be. Most African Americans start off at that 150, 160 diastolics in the 90, and by that time we're encroaching on probably failure of our kidneys, failure oh, that's of our good. failure of everything. So we have to also know our numbers, know our body, know ourselves, so we can understand that this is not the right number for me. So you'll see that like um. We have patients who come in, and then when we get their blood pressure, oh, doc, I don't feel well today. They don't feel well because their blood pressure has been running high so long. Right. Every time they get a normal blood pressure, they don't know what normal feeling is supposed to be. Or most of the time when you find out your blood pressure is high for the first time, when your head starts hurting. When mm -hmm. your feet start swelling, when your feet start swelling, it's an uh-oh moment and that your kidneys may be given out at that point. So we have to know our bodies. 140s, 150s, diastolic, for your top number, your second number, which is considered your diastolic, should be 80 or less. And you should basically say, I want to keep it right there. Do what Dr. Horn says. Get out. Get moving. You know, and like in Michelle Obama said, get moving, people. Do those right. things. Because we want to keep those numbers down. We talked about earlier, you know, the girls here, we have conversations all the time about what is obesity? What That's is good. Weight? What is thickness? You know, that new term, they're in the South. They're, they're <laughs> in, the South and on, uh, in Chicago. For them, you know, for California people, you know, you BMI less than 35, that's your um, body mass but, index. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're like, oh my God, they're on obesity. Dr. Horn and I was talking about the other day, they kept this something called thick. I don't I don't understand that thickness. You know, people are like, oh, I'm thick. You're fat. No, let me just say that. Shapely. Not, you know, shapely. 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 Because but also, Dr. Horn, am I correct? That thickness can lead to cardiovascular disease. Yes. I mean, like Brazil said, you know, when you have a larger stomach, you have the larger hip. You know, even though they're saying that people like that, we got to figure out what's healthy. Sometimes you're going to say that I'm big, but are you really healthy? Dr. Moore, comment on being big and healthy. Is that, is that two things that go together? Mm. You, know, you know what? Like Giselle had said earlier, you don't need to be a size four to be healthy. Right. You can be a size 12 and be healthy and physically mm -hmm. fit. When when I was out there running marathons, you'd see people of all sizes. That's good. But you cannot tell me at when you're morbidly obese that you're fit. If you are having difficulty walking up a flight of stairs, if you are having difficulty walking a block, you need to just kind of reevaluate where you are. And yeah. I, and just walking. And and no one and I tell my patients, I'm not saying you know, I want you to lose 100 pounds. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is I need you to get as close to your B a healthy BMI as you can. Yes. Yes. And with some of those people that you meet do need to lose 100 pounds. True. Mm -hmm. True. True. Here I call it Louisiana strong. We have, they love to eat. Their food is good here. Yes, they it is. A thick person. But I was like, you can be... There's a healthy thick 
and there's an obese thick that's not healthy. There's no one. I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to compensate. You know that meet the people where they are. Right. So I'm right. trying to meet right. them where they are. I can't tell them that they're more be obese and actually expect them to absorb what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't be 330 and healthy. You just cannot be. Um, you are well above, not in five foot three, you cannot be that big and be healthy, but you can make a change and drop down to 200 and be healthier. That's what I mean by healthy thick. You're no longer 330, you're 230. And yes, I would love for you to get down to more like 150, but that's not realistic if you mm -hmm. were 12 and you were 200 pounds. So I have to meet the patient where she is and make sure that I can get her at least halfway and she has a better life expectancy than she does at 3.30 with hypertension and diabetes at 21. There's a question on here that says, what is a healthy BMI? So what is a healthy BMI? 20 to um, 25 is considered normal. Anything 25 to 30 is considered overweight and 30 and up, de deadly. It's okay. called obesity one, then you get up to obesity two, and then obesity three. Uh, when your BMI is over 40, and I've seen patients with BMIs of 75, um, Lord help you us. are well, well into a category that um, is super unhealthy. The right. way now, we have to do is a bariatric table. Yeah, people people are in here now talking about now I'm five two. What's a BMI? I'm five seven. So <laughs> now everyone's panicking okay, so, over their BMI. Let me stop by saying it, uh, Dr. Horn will tell you too, a B of the BMI scale is wrong. Right. It's, it's what we use um because that's the tool we have currently, but the thing right. is majorly jacked up. Um but it's what we have, and I've seen people who on the scale have a BMI of 35, and they are healthy, but it's mm -hmm. the only two we have. So you have to adjust it. So it's it's not the best. It needs to be redone, actually. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Because so many of us struggle with our weight, and then that can become a very psychological disorder with that. And, and we have to start dealing with both. And I, and I love that when we're talking about bariatrics, we have to deal with the mental as well as the physical in that because it does us no good to have these surgeries. And please correct me if I'm wrong. What's the percentage, and I don't know if you know, of those who have the surgery who gain the weight back or even more? And what's usually the turnaround time with that? Well, I think um, when people have, now there's different levels of bariatric surgery. Sure. People who get the sleeve have about, they lose about 20% of their body weight. So okay. if you were weighing 220, you might lose about 40 pounds okay. over a five year period. If you don't keep that off, you tend to gain all of that back within a five year period. Um, okay. And then they keep going from there if they don't make exercise changes, dietary changes, or become cognizant of their weight. Um, with gastric banding, um, they I've seen people gain every bit that they've lost back. And then the gas, the ruin Y or the um, complete gastric bypass. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said it right there in your silence. <laughs> That, let me comment on Giselle thing. I think also what we need to tell people that that is not the answer to the problem. Thank you. Thank the you. The problem is, is that sometimes it's a hereditary component. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a societal component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I am going to do a gastric bypass or I will do a sleeve. That doesn't necessarily mean that my body is now healthy because you got to mm -hmm. understand that there's consequences that go along with getting a ruin Y or a gastric sleeve. You don't absorb all your vitamins. You don't right. your, your hair falls out. And right. I think smaller portions of increment, a balanced diet, which are starches, your vegetables, and your protein will kind of help you out. We as African American needs to change our whole mindset on how we That's eat. it. Don't get me wrong. I can eat a, a pig from the rooter to the tutor. How I <laughs> love <laughs> you know, everybody knows me, especially if Jordan is listening. She know I go. I can't do without some bacon. But everything <laughs> in moderation is is okay. We tend to right. I went to a friend of mine's house the other day who has a kidney disease. Her plate is probably a, a six ounce plate. I mean a six ounce square. Right. And I'm, like, and I'm looking like, whoa, you know. But she's healthy. She's eating her diseases. 
process is turned around. However, I'm like, I'm still hungry. I'm still hungry because I'm used to eating on a big 12 ounce plate and that has everything in it piled high. So we need to change. Right. So small, more frequent meals. Will yes. Change our outcome later on. So then therefore, like what Dr. Horn was saying in the beginning, you're exercising, you're doing all this, but if you've eaten everything after that, you're, you're not going to lose any weight and we're going to actually be discouraged. So we have to have a whole complete change of our lifestyle. This is has to be a lifestyle commitment in a lifestyle That's good. change in order for us to even have something. As advocates in our community, like the links and the AKAs and the Deltas, we need to now advocate for someone to have better supermarkets in our communities. Because if we're going to fight obesity, if we're going to fight diabetes, if we're going to fight cardiovascular disease, we have to have some community changes. So forms like this, I'm on my soapbox, sorry, Mari. You're um, all right. Forms like this should get out there so we can say, in order for us to close the health care gap, to close these disparities, we need to make changes in our community and we need to make changes on the social level. Because how many times yes. people, live in a, people live in Ladera, you know, we're Inglewood Pacific Chapter of Links. We live in Ladera. We do not have a supermarket quality supermarket mm. for another 15 miles. You got to go to Culver City. So in order for us to change and change how we look, what we look like, I'm like Dr. Hunter, I'm not trying to be 110 pounds. I'm just trying to be healthy and live right. right. And so we need to, uh, it has to be a social change. It has to be a mental change. And all of this has to be together on one platform. Wow, this has been so great. We got to have a part two come out. But there's one more question I want to hit before we take off the, by Paula Williams. And she asked, I think this is a very good question. She says, are there any tests that African-American women should ask for at their annual physicals that our primary physicians may not automatically offer us? That's a great question. That's a great so question. She, that's, she has to be a little bit more specific. If she has... Like if she has hypertension, she can ask for a BNP. It's it's a, it tests okay. for renal function. Um, okay. If she has diabetes in her family history, she can ask for a hemoglobin A1C to check okay. her um, uh, glucose levels, okay. or she can ask for a one hour glucose. I mean, it depends on what she's looking for. And okay. then some people who have a bad family history can ask for genetic testing. Insurance is covering that now. Oh, oh, say that one more time. Genetic testing. Um, so you can request genetic testing. I mean, okay, so if you have a family history of cancer, like in my family, I've lost both my parents to cancer, different mm. kinds, but both mm -hmm. my parents died of cancer. So I have two first degree relatives that died of a cancer, not to mention my grandmother on my father's side. So okay. that makes me more at risk um, for um, cancers. So I right. need to have a genetic testing. If you had a grandmother or, or aunt or mother that died of breast or ovarian cancer, you would benefit from genetic testing to make sure you don't have any hereditary links for that. Mm -hmm. But we also have to start thinking about how we speak of ourselves. Mm. If we call ourselves, I feel fat today. Um, would you like someone to call your daughter fat? Because what right. we say to ourselves is sometimes more destructive than anybody can say to us. So we speak to ourselves in love, give ourselves self-love. We can forgive ourselves for that piece of cake and know that tomorrow is a new day and get up and do better. Right. If you tell yourself you're fat, you feel worthless. Because I don't self let anybody tell me I'm fat. I'm Come fine. On. Come so on. Come on. I tell can't, you can't say to yourself horrible things and expect someone else to give it to you. I love me, so I'm not going to call myself fat. I love it. I say it all the time. We have to stop the stinking thinking that's been yes. plaguing our communities for so long. Okay, we we I would love to continue. We got to have a part two. You guys are always more than welcome to come back to the Mental Health Matters with Marty show. It is my desire, and Dr. Al and I have been talking about putting a show together that speaks to our phys physical health as well as our mental health to, uh, uh, as well. So we're going to launch something coming up real soon because it's our desire to change the trajectory of the African-American community. We don't have to suffer in silence, but we can speak up and speak out so that we can live uh, with yeah. that. So let's have parting words before we go with that. Uh, let's start with with Miss Lula. H how do you? How was? Did did we represent the links well tonight? Marty, you guys did a great job. Thank you to uh, 
uh, Link Gwen, Dr. Link Gwen. Thank you to Dr. Uh, Giselle. Thank you to Dr. Uh, I wrote the name. Yeah. Jamie. Jamie Horn. So Jamie much. Horn. You know, you represent. Yes, Dr. Horn. You did a great job, and we thank you so much. And we thank you, uh, Marty, for partnering with us on this project. February is Heart Health Month, and yes, I, in the Pacific chapter, we have really been representing and pushing heart health, especially among our African American uh, our, our women our community. So we thank you so much for all that you do, and we thank you to all three of the doctors for all that they do and making a difference to the community. Well, we thank the links for all that you do and keep doing what you do. Everyone's talking about part two, part two, part two. Dr. Jamie Horn, we know it is late out there in, in Chicago. Please give us some parting words and what would you, and how can our followers, those who are listening, how can they find you and follow you? Because you're, you're just amazing. Oh, <laughs> uh, first I want to say thank you. Yes. And um, people can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram. What about um, where you were, Doc? What'd you say, Gwen? Eagles, they can make appointments, right? Oh, oh yes. Oh. How can we see you? Make you our doctor. Chicago, if you're in the Chicagoland area, you can find me at Family Christian Health Center. We have a website, and you can make appointments on the website. I want to say a parting word. Yes. Get a friend. Gwen has been that friend who will ask me, did you take your blood pressure medicine? Or I'll be stressed out, and I'll say my head hurt, and she'll say, did you take your medicine? Half the time I didn't. <laughs> it is good to have a friend yes. at your back. And also get a friend to work out with. And just lace up your shoes and That's take right. around the block. Love it. Dr. Horn, thank you so much. You are absolutely amazing. We appreciate you. Dr. Gazelle, oh my goodness, down there in Lake Charles. How can our followers, how can they get a hold of you? How can they follow you? And your parting words. So I'm also on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me with my name there. I'm at Lake Charles Memorial Hospital for Women in Lake Charles. Um, you can find me on the website as well. Um, my parting words is to love yourself, love yourself better than you would love yes. anyone else. Because if you don't love yourself, you're empty vessel trying to love every others. Um, it starts from the inside out and we have to do better and represent each other and love each other a little bit better. Um, people's tolerance to each other has been decimated because people have this social media mindset that you would mm -hmm. say stuff to people that you would never say to their face. So right. You have a little bit of cruelty out there, a little bit of intolerance, and um, no one will ever say the things that they say on social media to your face. And we've endured four years of, of some uh, rather um, aggressive language towards people. Yes, we have. Um, so now we have to figure out how we can come to some civility and treat people with better respect. So I hope that we can find the ways to get through the disparities and bring us back to a common ground or at least stop the lying and then cheating and loving each other a little come bit. Come on. So. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you again. Dr. Allen, you know I have nothing but love for you. How can we get a hold and how can we set an appointment at the Gardena Good Women's morning, Center? Center. First yes. Of all, I say thank you again for having us on your show. I just want to say thanks to the links one for allowing me to be a part of this illustrious organization. Um, number two, um, you guys can find me at Gardena Women's Center, Giselle, as well as Dr. I'm sorry. We are friends. That's why we keep calling you friends. <laughs> but uh, you know, Dr. Hawkins as well as Dr. Horn, we all specialize in women's care women first um, because we understand the importance of cardiovascular health as well yes. as um, HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. That mm. also plays a major role in cardiovascular health. We didn't get a chance to touch upon that tonight. Right. However, once you get your hormones in order, that get your mind in order, that get your cardiovascular system in order, all those things work together. My thing to you, again, I just want to back up a little bit, make sure you talk to your doctors. Make yes. sure the doctors understand. Make sure they understand that the needs that you have. Let them hear you. Make sure they know that your mother had cardiovascular disease, your diet, your father had diabetes, that they get testing on all those things. Yeah. Take control of your health. Take, take control of your life. You only get one and you get one shot at it. If you can't pass by the mirror and look at yourself sideways, 
Therefore, you need to do some adjustments. You need to do some introspection and you need to say, I need to take control of me. So when you can look at yourself from top to bottom and say, I am happy with me, the way inter internally and outside, that, that will make you a happier person. So Marty, again, thank you. Thank you for being my sounding board. Thank you Always. for all of us to be a part of your show. And I'm so happy to be a part and could continue to do what you're doing. Thank you. See, thank you, Marty. It is my pleasure. Carlinda said this was a wake-up call. For so many, this was an amazing wake-up call. And again, as we always close and say, listen, thank you so much for joining us on the Mental Health Matters with Marty Show. Please, you can follow me on all social media platforms uh, with Mental Health Matters with Marty on Instagram. Please check out my website at mentalhealthmarty.com. And there you can find all of your mental health paraphernalia, T-shirts, everything that will help you along this mental health journey. Journey. And also for you podcast listeners, or if you're not listening to a podcast, please check out my podcast on Mental Health Matters with Marty. And, and please subscribe. For those of you who are Apple listeners, please give us a five-star rating and a review. Or become an iMatter member of Mental Health Matters with Marty by texting iMatter to 855-717-1272. Again, that's 855-717-1272 to get all of your latest information on your mental mental health and wellness. As we say each week, we don't want you to continue to suffer in silence in the shadow of shame, but we want you to speak up, speak out and live, but always remember to enjoy your life. Until next time.